Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Ron. Thanks to everyone for being here early. Welcome to the Rather Prize session here at South by Southwest EDU. This is our second year being at this festival, and it's our second year doing the Rather Prize. And I'm so excited that we're able to share with you today not only the success of our first year with the prize, but also to crown a new champion here today. We have this contest, and today is the day, it's my favorite day of the year, where we get to share with all of you what is the best idea in Texas education. So firstly, what is the Rather Prize? It's a $10,000 prize for the best idea to improve education in the state of Texas. It's open to students, teachers, and administrators. We like to say anyone learning in or working in a Texas educational institution is eligible to submit an idea for the prize. We award a $10,000 prize, as well as $10,000 in implementation support, thanks to Rice University's Center for Civic Leadership. Because we're not just about identifying the best ideas in Texas education, we're about implementing them. And that's why today it is a true honor to have our inaugural winner, Dr. Sanford Jeems of Eastside Memorial High School, sitting right there, to talk about his innovative idea and to share with us how they affect the lives of his students who are also here today. And now, being that this is the second year of the prize, we also get to share with you the momentum that we've seen how we've seen ideas from across the state of Texas, people really thinking in a critical way about their own education system and how they can make it better. We get to share with you the 10 finalists among all of our ideas, of which we had 35,000 public votes cast for one of those 10 finalists, something we're really proud of. And we get to declare the best of those right here today. So thank you for being here. Good morning. Oh, good morning, everyone. And let me echo what Martin has said. We really appreciate you being here this morning, especially those of you who are standing. Uh, we appreciate very much greatly uh, your being here. Also want to underscore our thanks to Ron Reed, who's been so good to the Rather Prize. I don't think he could have gotten off the ground, much less gotten through the first year without his great help and everybody at South by EDU. Also want to recognize Dr. Caroline Quinneman, of Rice University, who's here this morning. Thank you very much, Caroline, for all of your great help. So, uh, we have no illusions about the Rather Prize. This is a small effort. One might want to say a we effort. Just our small effort at trying to generate ideas to help Texas schools from the bottom up. Yes, it's important to have ideas and have uh, help from the federal government, from state governments, from county governments, from the top down. But when Martin was looking for something to contribute to society, his grandmother, fighting heart, Jeannie Grace Goble, rather, who's here this morning, said to Martin, uh, you know, you're getting to the age where you should think about giving back. Uh, that we, as a family, have been extremely lucky and mightily blessed. And so she talked to Martin about ideas of giving back. And it was Martin who came up with the idea of let's ask students, teachers, principals, administrators, the people who are actually in schools to give their ideas. And this will allow ideas to bubble up from the bottom from people who are in the classrooms, in the education tr trenches every day. So that was the genesis of the idea. I love the idea for a lot of reasons not the least of which is, you know, what you're looking at here, folks, uh, is a reporter who got lucky, who got very, very lucky. And one reason I got lucky is I am a product of Texas public schools. I never saw the inside of it. <laughs> uh, and this was uh, true of my wife, Jean, as well. That I never saw the inside of anything but a public school. In Houston, I went to uh, um, Love Elementary, Hamilton Junior High School, Reagan Senior High School, and then went to a state, at that time college, Sam Houston State Teachers College, which is now Sam Houston State University. So I know what dedicated teachers, principals, administrators with community support can do in helping young people realize their dreams on that distant stock. Now, the second thing about the public school I do want to emphasize 
that our prize has been open and will remain open to schools of every description, parochial schools, private schools of all kinds, charter schools, homeschooling. I admire uh, people who are involved in those different things and we have uh, had our, our entry process open to everybody in all kinds of schools. The only criteria is that you're, you are or have been in the last three to five years involved with a Texas school as a student, teacher, principal, or administrator. Again, I want to thank you very much for being here. Uh, we'll announce the winner shortly, but in the meantime, here's Martin again. Just one note about programming. We are going to do a question and answer towards the end, and it's open to everybody, whether you're sitting or you're standing. Uh, in order to do that, we'd like to encourage everybody to go to slido.com, that's S-L-I-D-O.com, to enter the hashtag uh, S-X-S-W-E-D-U, and to uh, select the room Austin Convention Center Exhibit Hall 4. So at the end of today's session, we will try to get to as many questions as we possibly can. Uh, and if all of you will, will follow that process, we'd really appreciate it. But for now, I'm really excited to bring up Dr. Sanford Jeems and Austin's Eastside Memorial High School to tell you about the innovative success that they've seen with their idea, which was the prize winner declared right here last year. So Dr. Jeems, please join us. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Sanford James. I'm the coordinator for health science programs at Eastside Memorial High School. And it gives me great pleasure to discuss the actual implementation of our Radler Prize Award from last year. We called it the Step Up Challenge. And I'd like to think of education in the words of Malcolm X. Malcolm X said that education is the pathway to the future. Those who prepare for it today, the future belongs to them. And with that being said, along with Harry Brooks, one of the program managers at Eastside Memorial High School, we devised something called the Step Up Challenge, which was the Student Training Enrichment Project. And with this project, we actually look to help our students at Eastside Memorial High School prepare for their future. And the most important thing we did it was really exposing those students to more awareness of college readiness opportunities. We felt that college visits was something that was very important. The Rather Prize winning award for us, the Step Up Challenge, consisted of three components, pathways to college, mentoring, and leadership through service. The pathways for college meant that we took the students during a summer leadership institute through several college visits. The primary purpose for this was to expose those students to the opportunities ordinarily they would not be exposed to. Prior to the implementation of our Step Up Challenge, many of the students at Eastside Memorial High School had not visited college campuses, particularly during the summer. The three-week summer institute also included a number of academic readiness workshops. It also included uh, students having the ability to really think critically about not only where they wanted to go to college, but exactly how this would, how this would coincide with their future. One of the most important things we also felt we needed to do for our community partners and industry partners, we felt it was important for those partners to understand more of where the students came from. This encompassed actually neighborhood tours led by students from Eastside Memorial High School and Mr. Harry Brooks so that we felt like our partners would have an idea of where our students came from so they can really hone in on the needs for our students. Other than the campus visits, the Center for Civic Leadership, along with students from Rice University, had the opportunity to engage our students in workshops, whether it might be time management. And one of the most important things we also did, we felt our students needed to improve on their soft skills. And so we had classes on etiquette, we had classes on actually interview skills, dress for success, and of course, SAT prep, and even FAFSA sessions as well. The most important thing we also felt for our students with the actual assistance of partners like Richard Franklin, the executive director for Youth Unlimited, we had entrepreneurship workshops. Many students did not envision themselves as being a business owner. We felt that it was important to, for those students to prepare for the future to also think beyond college. That meant the idea of actually thinking of owning their own business. 
Last but not least, again, I want to emphasize the three major points. Pathways to college, mentoring, and leadership through service. We felt very good about the fact that we implemented our prize, not just with the college visits, but during the school year. Mentors from the University of Texas Blazers visited our college, visited our high school campus, and actually worked one-on-one -on -one with many of the students to prepare them early for college. We're proud to say, as a result of our step-up challenge, over 70% of our participants were actually accepted into four-year colleges and universities. What was really exciting about our Step Up Challenge was the fact that these students actually were accepted during the early admission process. And I want to emphasize to everyone, it's not that students don't want to attend college, but the process of preparation, many students actually don't think about this until pretty much the spring semester. So as a result, I do want to report that not just the students who participated, but this actual attitude bled over into a senior class where we had a record number of students to apply early, a record number of students to actually be accepted. At this time, you have an opportunity to hear about the experiences of some of those participants. Jericho Batista, Ashley Castro, and Destiny Brown. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Jericho Batista, and I'm a senior at Eastside Memorial, and I'm proud to say that I attended the Summer Leadership Institute program that took place at Eastside Memorial. The program, it taught me many skills, such as leadership skills, social skills, and taught me how to prep for the SAT and ACT, which motivated me greatly to get higher scores on them. We, uh, I, I got the chance to be open to the opportunity to attend very various campus tours that really opened me to many opportunities. And a major beneficial factor to me was a financial literacy lesson that I learned that helped me realize how money really works in the real world. And I'm proud to say that I am attending the University of North Texas on my four-year plan to achieve my, my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Thank you. Buenos días, mi nombre es Ashley. Yo asistí al programa de verano que tomó parte en Eastside Memorial High School. Mi primer lenguaje es español y no aprendí el inglés hasta quinto año. A pasar de los años, asistí a la escuela intermedia y mejoré en mi inglés. In high school, I was able to understand, speak, and write English, but it was still a challenge for me. As the years went by, I improved. Now, I am fluent in both languages. My, my parents are immigrants, therefore I thought I was going to be working in construction or cleaning houses. They always told me I could do more, but I didn't see it within my environment. Their Summer Leadership Institute program showed me otherwise. They taught me that it was possible for me to do more, just like my parents told me so. They taught me how to study for the SAT and ACT. They taught me how to properly dress and how to properly type an email, something that little made a big difference for me. Thanks to the Summer Leadership Institute program and the teachers like Dr. James, I am proud to say that I will be the first generation from my family to graduate from high school and to attend college at Texas State University in the fall. Good morning, I'm Destiny Brown. The Summer Leadership program that I attended over the summer helped me prepare for college. It helped me with the completion of my FAFSA, preparation for my ACT, SAT, and also helped me complete my college essays. Not only did it help me prepare for college, it helped me for situations after high school. Our mentors taught us how to properly dress for interviews, and they also taught us food etiquette on dining and other social skills that will help us in the future. On May 31st, I will be graduating Eastside Memorial High School and attending Texas Southern University in the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the administration, particularly our principal, Brian Miller from Eastside Memorial High School, and a, a special thanks to the Rathers, 
for not only implementing the Rather Prize Award, but more importantly for our high school, Eastside Memorial, we're very fortunate to be the first inaugural winner of the Rather Prize Award, particularly from the Austin Independent School District. It gives me great pleasure to really talk about the successes of our program, and we look forward to many more. Thank you very much. Thank you to, to Dr. Jeems and all the students from, from Eastside Memorial High School. We're going to get into year two of the prize, but I just want to say a couple more things about Eastside Memorial. It was my honor to be able to work with some of these students as, as part of that summer program. And the motivation that all of them showed in order to get up early to come in, in June and July in order to hear about you know, etiquette and other soft skills is, is really impressive. And so I'd like to ask everybody to give one more round of applause, not only these students, but all of the students who are up early to be a part of the first of its kind program. So thank you. And, and thank you to everyone from Eastside for being just so gracious to, to everyone from Rice University and, and everyone else uh, as part of that program. So thank you all. Let's talk about year two of the prize. This year, we saw explosive growth in terms of the number of people who were interested in what we we're trying to do. So in addition, last year we had a $10,000 prize to the winner, and we provided some soft support from, from Rice University as uh, Eastside Memorial needed. But this year, we're able to say that not only are we giving $10,000 to the winner, but we're giving $10,000 in implementation support, thanks to Rice University Center for Civic Leadership. I think that that, uh, along with just increased awareness of the prize, led us to have uh, twice as many submissions this year as we did last year. And what's really important in that is that they came from across the state of Texas. They came from El Paso, they came from Beaumont, they came from Denton, they came from McAllen. They, they came across the state from students, from teachers, administrators, uh, collegiate professors. There was a real breadth and depth in terms of the ideas that we saw this year. Once we had those ideas, uh, they were called down to 10 finalists by volunteers from Rice University as well as an independent advisory board. I want to stress that my grandfather and I, nor anybody else in our family, had any role in deciding who the finalist or who the winner uh, was going to be. But we did open up the 10 finalists to a public voting process, and there were 35,000 public votes cast as a part of our contest, which we think really lends credibility to the winning idea, which we're getting to in just a few minutes here. The 35,000 votes represents over a two-fold increase from the number of votes that we saw last year. And so if you guys won't mind, what we'll do is we're going to go through the 10 finalists, share with you their 10 best ideas, and then after that, we're going to declare a winner. So we're going to read off here, beginning with finalist number one. By the way, these are in no particular order. One entry, finalist number one, from a student in the Wharton Independent School District. The idea is to connect local newspapers with school districts in order to teach students the importance of news and being an informed news consumer. With a focus on rural areas, this idea would create a series of after-school newspapers and or web content that would educate the surrounding community about national e issues from a student perspective. That's from a student in Wharton. Finalist number two is to create a living history museum, asking students to participate through skits, videos, and other media in order to learn a first-person perspective about major historical events. Targeted at middle school students, this idea looks to teach students how to use primary and secondary sources in order to display evidence-based historical accounts. And that comes to us from a teacher in Leander Independent School District. And from a teacher in the Houston Independent School District, and making the finals was this idea. To create an entrepreneurial track for high school students, this idea looks to generate student-run for-profit organizations that also can do social good asking students to pick a specific social problem, students will create a company guided by an advisory board of staff and business leaders 
with the hope of establishing a sustainable business. The idea from a teacher in the Houston Independent School District. Our fourth finalist from an associated educator with Midland Independent School District is to create a one-to-one -one focused learning tutoring program in order to reduce the dropout rate of high school students using community members, current and retired teachers, and top performing students. This idea aims to draw upon volunteer tutors as a support system to improve student success. Volunteers would work one-on-one -on -one with students in two-hour shifts with the goal of creating the maximum possible community investment in schools. Again, from an associate educator in Midland Independent School District. Number five on our list, and remember these are no special order, is from a student at the University of North Texas in Denton. The idea is to encourage Texas high schools to offer more anthropology classes with the goal of fostering increased understanding among different racial, ethnic, and religious groups. This idea aims to establish anthropology as a class in an increased number of Texas schools. That's from the student at the University of North Texas in Denton. Our sixth finalist, the idea is to create a class sage, a student of the week in each classroom, who serves as a liaison between teachers and students by coming in early and working one-on-one -on -one with their teacher. Particularly focused on English language learners, this idea hopes to have students serve as the emissary of knowledge for each class while easing burdens of teachers. And that's from an administrator in Sherryland Independent School District. Number seven. This is from a teacher in Angleton. The Angleton Independent School District made the finals. The idea is to supplement the elementary school curriculum by developing career and technology enrichment programs offered by community volunteers focused on low-income and rural students, this idea looks to draw upon the skills and expertise of community members in those fields in order to inspire groups of students at a young age to be more successful in school. That's from a teacher at Angleton. Our eighth finalist is to create a reading blast program where teachers attend phonics-based literacy training in order to teach their students the structure of words and sounds. This idea aims to teach students how to read using physical and verbal cues in addition to learning letters. The goal of this program is to increase literacy and improve instruction among varied levels of learners, and that's from a teacher right here in Austin Independent School District. We have two more, and this is the next to last one. This is from a teacher in Lake Dallas Independent School District. The idea, to create morning workshops targeted at elementary school students and taught by high school students. Students would attend morning seminars on the topics of their choice. The goal of this program is to provide as many opportunities for students at an early age to explore their different passions and future careers by allowing them to tailor their learning among a wide variety of subjects, all while older students develop expertise by teaching subjects of their interest to younger students. That's from a teacher in Lake Dallas. And now our final finalist, and then we'll declare a winner. Finalist number 10 is to create a life after youth course where high school students learn such topics as the basics of taxes, loans, credit scores, and other financial skills central to their adult lives. This idea aims to prepare students for their financial future while still in high school so that they will be better prepared to make informed decisions as adults. And that comes from a student in Galena Park Independent School District. I want to emphasize that we're very proud of all the finalists. Any one of these 10 ideas we would have been very happy to support. But it's time now, um, our job was, that is the job of our panel, our advisory panel and others to pick a winner. And so I call your attention to the screen. Hello, I'm Dan Rather. And I'm Martin Rather. And the winner of the second annual Rather Prize for the best idea to improve education in the state of Texas is Lake Dallas Elementary in Lake Dallas, Texas. We were hopeful, but no, we didn't know until just now. <laughs>
Well, congrats. Tell Thank us, you. what motivated you to, to submit this idea? Um, I think, you know, just looking at, you know, our school and um, our area and, uh, you know, I, I'm fortunate to work in a school and in a district where um, we have just amazing teachers and kids and um, an amazing community and I just felt really strongly that there there was a way that we could kind of pull everyone's talents together and and really utilize um, the people that we have because they're they're really amazing <laughs> you may want to work work that microphone just a little closer oh, sorry not too close. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, we're always very in interested in implementing the idea for other schools and other school districts who may be interested in the idea, what are the first two steps? Um, I would say the first two steps are um, building a uh, culture of leadership with your students because it's something that we've really um, been cultivating for a while and we have some really amazing student leaders. So um, building your students up to um, be really confident leaders and giving them um, that confidence um, would be step one. Um, and then uh, making sure that you have community and teachers and staff on board um, and ready to learn because I think um, the elementary kids are ready. <laughs> you don't have to do much with them, but I think making sure that your high school students are, are ready to be leaders and step up um, and you know, making sure that your, your community and, and your teachers are, are on board. Absolutely. So now we'd like to take the chance to invite all of you to ask any questions that you may have, either about the prize or about uh, our winner this year. Um, so if you all again will go to uh, slido.com and uh, enter the hashtag SXSWEDU. Uh, and to give you all a moment, oops, sorry, if we could keep that PowerPoint up there just for one second. Um, while you all are, are asking those questions, oops, well, there we go. Uh, we need, we have, Many, many people have given us the opportunity to be here today uh, to make this, this prize the success that it is. And so we'd like to take just a moment to, to thank those people. So firstly, Ron Reed, who introduced us, and the South by Southwest EDU team. Ron, he is the nicest guy. There, there's no question about that. He, he's, he's lying, uh, what, he, what he said in the beginning. But uh, not only Ron, but his entire uh, team, I mean, you all probably know, this festival is so incredibly well run, and it's really a testament to him and his entire staff for all the work that they've done, and we're just so honored that we're able to be back here for a second year. Uh, Dr. Caroline Quenneman and Rice University Center for Civic Leadership, they do so much on the implementation side, but I have to take a moment here and, and thank Dr. Quenneman. She works, I would say, on the Rather Prize every single day. It's a thankless job. It's probably an annoying job. But you will not find anyone who is more intelligent and more kind and more thoughtful in absolutely everything that she does. And we are so, so grateful to her. And just, again, absolutely everything. She's involved in every part of this contest, and we really appreciate it. The Rich Endowment at Rice University, they provide the funding for Rice students to be involved in our contest, whether that's grading the initial submissions uh, or even having Rice students come here to, to South by Southwest EDU, which I'll get to in a moment. We're so grateful to, to the Rich Endowment for their support. Dr. Johnny Veselka of the Tech Association of School Administrators, he allows us to come to their conference uh, twice, twice a year and gives us a fantastic opportunity to talk with school districts across the state of Texas. Uh, Ron Oliveira of Oliveira Public Communications, he made that great video uh, that you all just saw. Tip the cap to Ron. Wiggins King, Pervez Captain, Dr. Caroline Quenneman, and Dr. Sanford Jeems make up our advisory board. They look at so many submissions in a relatively short period of time to make sure that we're ready every March for, for South by Southwest and, and to declare a winner. Uh, and it's an honor to have Dr. Jeems with us for the first time on the advisory board this year for his perspective on actually being a winner. So we're really, really appreciative to all of the advisory board members. And then Daisy Gray, J.C. Parham, and Priya Kane were a part of our summer implementation team. These were all Rice students. You might have seen some of their uh, photos as part of the, the east side slides. And uh, Daisy Gray is actually here today helping us out with, with South by Southwest EDU, and we're really appreciative, Daisy, so thank you. Pre, uh, Lizzie Bjork and Paul Onyali worked for us in the fall. Uh, they're Rice students who encouraged many, many districts, to uh, many schools, to submit their ideas. And Kerrigan Quenneman made uh, some videos for us with Eastside Memorial, and she really did a great job with them. So thank you to everyone here, and now we look forward to taking your questions. All right, so the first question uh, is about sustainability. That's an excellent question. So Katie, we'll, we'll bring this to you. The question is, how sustainable is your program? 
Um, I think that's an excellent question, and I think it, it goes back to what we were discussing just a moment ago, is about um, cultivating a, um, a culture around, um, you know, uh, leadership and um, really supporting um, our students, which I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to work in a district where I, th I think we've really done a fantastic job of that. So as, as long as you are, are truly bringing in, in your community and building those students up, I, I think it's absolutely um, sustainable for, for the long run because this is, this is um, really goes back to people. So if, if the people are, are intrinsically motivated to come in and work with kids and, and are excited to, to build our students up, um, I mean, it, it's sustainable for the long haul, absolutely. We agree, and we look forward to making sure that every idea that wins the Rather Prize is not just a one-year idea. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with Eastside Memorial. Um, we're going to talk at the very end about how uh, many of you can get involved with, with their idea, and we definitely think, as you said, that your project is one that, that can be around uh, for the long term. So, great question. We'll move to the next one. We, we may go relatively quickly through these because we want to get to as many questions uh, as possible. So uh, what aspects of cultural responsiveness are considered in projects, recognizing that the best idea consider assets of a community and network that sustain efforts? Well, I'll answer the first part of that uh, and say that, to be honest with you, in our very first year, we got extremely lucky to have Eastside Memorial uh, and the community that surrounds Eastside Memorial as part of, uh, of, of that project that we were really I would say perhaps unprepared, but certainly overwhelmed by the response that we saw from everybody around Eastside Memorial. Uh, in terms of the overall you know, consideration of, of the projects, perhaps we should have gotten into this earlier, but the first step is that uh, every idea that's, that's looked at is looked at with a, a standardized rubric by volunteers from Rice University. And then many of those ideas, the top ones, are sent to our advisory board. And our advisory board has a, a very wide breadth uh, and depth of um, interests and, and expertise, you know, some folks from the business community, some folks from the uh, college level, from the high school level. We really uh, ask them to consider such things as, uh, you know, what, what sort of community can be involved in a project. And perhaps you'd like to take a second to talk about the community that was involved in your project. Uh, about the community um, partners. We saw some of them in the video. Yes. You know, can, you, can you talk about how they're going to be involved in, in your project? Um, absolutely. Okay, so um, our, our community partners will really be open to, um, you know, anyone in the community um, that, that's wanting to reach out and work with our students. Um, so I, I, I definitely think there will be, you know, some sort of a little bit of a vetting process to make sure that, you know, um, what they're coming in and teaching students is um, appropriate and, you know, um, uh, of course, there will always be supervised and all that kind of stuff, but I, I definitely think that, um, you know, it, it's really, we're open to the, having the community um, involved and, and coming in and working with our kids because there's so many people out in our community that have so much to offer, so. And we look forward to working with them. The next question is, what recommendations do you have for teachers to maintain a safe and open classroom climate when discussing politics? Well, I think on this one we're going to have to go to a resident political expert. <laughs> Brandon, what sort of advice would you give to, to teachers in this, uh, in this political climate for, for how to talk to students? Well, uh, I'd be very interested in talking to teachers about this because teachers are the ones who know best. But based on my own experience, I would say, the best approach is to always emphasize basics of the basics of civics, such fundamental things as what does the Constitution say, what does the Bill of Rights, which is part of the Constitution, say, how does a, how does a law become law? These basic things of what used to be called civics when I was in the seventh grade, uh, I find increasingly are not taught, are not taught very extensively. So my advice for whatever anything it would be worth for any teacher who saying, well, how do I handle the politics? And say, well, let's go back to the basics. Let's talk about some fundamentals. Students uh, in, inevitably will want to talk about what's happening today, what's happening, what's in the headlines. And I think just coming back, well, let's start with the basics. Let's have a short civics course here and perhaps recommend some reading and maybe taking a look at To Kill a Mockingbird the old film. <laughs> uh, those are my recommendations. There you go. Excellent. The next question, how can we follow the progress of the prize winner and runner-up? We're going to get to that uh, in just a moment. That's our, our last slide and we go back to the PowerPoint. Um, let's go to uh, the next question. We'll, we'll get right back to that one. Uh, 
what were the biggest lessons that you took away from last year's implementation? Well, that, that's, that's an excellent question. I'd say the first thing is, um, really, I, I just can't say enough how important it is for the, the school they're working with uh, to really be invested across all levels in, in what the Rather Prize and what their idea is trying to do. And again, we got really, really lucky with Eastside Memorial High School. Everyone there was just so kind and so gracious to us uh, and really worked hard in terms of, of implementation. We also try and spread uh, the effort of, of that individual school that wins to go to um, other places and other schools. And that was why we mentioned earlier the Texas Association of School Administrators. Uh, they put out a, a news magazine every quarter that is actually sent to every single school district in the state of Texas. And we were thankful to be able to write about Eastside Memorial's effort so that that went to, to many districts across the state. So we really, I would say, the number one lesson is uh, to, to ask the, the partner, and I'm, I'm sure you all will do this, you know, to really to work with us as much as possible, and then to try and spread the word as much as, as we possibly can. Um, so with that, we're going to stick around for a few minutes after our session, but I'd like to get back to the question about following along. So if you all will go back to our PowerPoint, we'll tell you about a couple more things that are, that are coming up here. Uh, which we're really looking forward to. So in order to follow along, firstly, we're doing a Facebook Live event on the South by Southwest EDU Facebook page uh, today at 2 p.m. That's going to include uh, three folks you see up here as well as Dr. Sanford Jeans. We're really looking forward to that. There is a special uh, episode of Dan Rather's America at 9 a.m. Central Time tomorrow on uh, satellite radio, Sirius XM, uh, the Radio Andy channel, channel 102. We're going to be speaking uh, with Dr. Caroline Quenneman uh, as well as Ron Reed uh, more about the Rather Prize and about South by Southwest EDU. And then we're going to post many, many updates throughout the course of the year uh, working with Lake Dallas on our at Rather Prize uh, Twitter account. So we really encourage everyone, if they can, uh, to follow along. And finally, specific to, to Dr. Jeem's idea, I know some of the students are going to be at the Austin ISD Expo booth right here. And again, it's an honor to, to, to be here at the Expo. There's so much energy. You all can probably hear it in the background right now. Uh, and so they'll be around to answer questions about their idea. But we're going to stick around as well right here. And we thank you all for attending today. Thank you very much.